Hey YouTube, what is going on guys? And thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. We are back with another episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays, part of our weekly side hustling series, and today is episode 87. Today's episode is going to be another one about handmade goods. I'm really starting to like these types of hustles more and more for a number of reasons. First, when you're doing handmade stuff, you're in control. You're not relying on somebody else for quality control. You're not subject to somebody else changing your product's pricing. You have a lot more control over your business, which is always good. And oftentimes you're selling a unique product that other people are not offering. Handmade stuff and small batch or craftsmanship type stuff is really hot right now. Whether we're talking handmade goods, artesian cheeses, artesian breads, or craft beer. There seems to be a longing in the marketplace for a simpler time and for quality craftsmanship among shoppers. Handmade goods also cuts out the need for dealing with overseas suppliers, which can be risky, expensive, and confusing. And uh, with the talk of, of tariffs and things like that coming from China and other countries, uh, that could be another thing that alleviates you from having to deal with that. And lastly, there's just an added piece of pride that goes along with when you make something with your own hands. Uh, anyhow, I'm really loving this category of hustles and goods, and that's what this story is about. Uh, today is a story about a Trader Joe's employee from Virginia who while seeking a side hustle uh, or a way to make some extra money to dig out of student loan debt and get out of his parents' house, started an Etsy side hustle that turned into not only a successful business, but his primary source of income. That's another thing I like about this story. While it's great having your own website and your own platform, you can succeed in, and make money selling on third parties like Etsy and others, which makes the learning curve of getting into e-commerce a lot easier, especially for somebody who's new. Today's side hustler is Elliot Adesso, a Trader, a Trader Joe's employee from Virginia. Another fun part of this story is that this all started as a creative way to find a gift for his mom. Elliot needed a gift for, her, for his mother. She's one of those people who have everything, so he didn't know what to get her. He decided on something unique and handmade, and Elliot remembered back in college when he had experimented with staining paper with tea and painting over it. For, for his mother's birthday, Elliot decided to try printing an old antique royalty-free image from an illustration made back in the 1800s. He decided to print it on tea-stained paper and to give it an interesting vintage look. The stain came out perfect and the image he printed on it looked great. Elliot decided he may be onto something and decided to capitalize on this momentum. He began building a library of royalty-free images that he could use for similar prints. Now, Elliot figured he could maybe sell a few of these prints and make a few bucks on the side, which would help him pay down his student loan debt faster, but he never really thought it would turn into anything more than beer money. Elliot had graduated college fairly recently. He was living at home in his mother's basement, struggling with student loan debt like so many of us. Elliot wanted to get out of his mom's house. He wanted to live somewhere with more natural light. He wanted to get those student loans put behind him. At first, the proposition of starting a business to Elliot was intimidating, However, as he began looking around on Etsy, he noticed many people were doing very well making money uh, with relatively simple shops. Elliot noticed there were a number of people selling images printed on old antique dictionary paper, and he thought his tea-stained images could potentially do well on there too. One day after work, Elliot uploaded his prints to Etsy. Nothing happened right away, as it oftentimes doesn't, but about 10 days later, he woke up to an email stating Etsy transactions. He'd made his first sale, and that was the first of a thousand more to come that first year. His first sale was an image of a pug riding a whale. Oddly enough, most of his early sales were various animals riding whales. Unicorns, llamas, various breeds of dogs. Why everyone wanted pictures of animals riding whales is beyond me and was beyond Elliot as well, but he followed his early success and began making more of them. And I think that's a good tip. You know, when you find something that works, double down and keep doing it. He also began getting more custom requests from buyers who wanted a specific, their specific pet or their specific breed of dog riding a whale. That's another interesting thing about Etsy. Buyers and sellers tend to have a closer connection and more of a relationship than on some other platforms. As an Etsy seller myself, I notice I get a lot of messages from potential buyers asking if I can do custom work. As your store expands and you get busier, uh, this type of stuff becomes more challenging to accommodate. However, as a new seller, it's a great way to ingratiate yourself to customers and to get some sales that those bigger sellers out there may ignore. Elliot's business continued to grow. In his second year, his sales more than doubled and he did over 2,500 orders and today is making over $3,600 a month selling these tea stained prints. What's even more impressive is all of this was built on about $300 in startup costs. So for anyone who thinks you need to be well-funded to start a business, that's completely untrue. If you don't have resources, you just need to be resourceful. 
That initial $300 startup cost mainly went to tea bags, bubble ma mailers, paper, ink, Etsy listing fees, as well as sponsored listings. One really cool thing about Elliot's business is because his images are hundreds of years old, that means any copyright on them has long expired, so he doesn't have to deal with any copyright infringement, and he doesn't have to pay royalties to anybody. Elliot has grown his business by using sponsored Etsy listings, which he says are very helpful. Uh, as an Etsy seller myself, I, I can confirm that you know they, they, they work wonders. They're, they're really a necessity to selling on Etsy, especially as a new seller. Uh, he also said he's had a lot of luck with Facebook lookalike audiences. Elliot knows that his products are often bought as gifts and sell really well around holidays and gift buying occasions. So he ramps up his social media marketing and paid advertising around those times. While Elliot still has his day job with Trader Joe's, he's transitioned to part-time so he can focus more time on growing his business. The tea print business has grown to be Elliot's primary source of income and his shop, which he calls Tea Stain Madness, is growing quickly. His business has allowed him to make a nice dent in paying down those student loans and has also allowed him to move out of his mom's basement and get his own place. One thing Elliot stressed about the business and the success he's had thus far is there's never going to be a perfect time to start. He really didn't know what he was doing when he started. He never used Etsy. He didn't really have any experience with e-commerce, but he used a skill and a knowledge set that he already had. He brought it to the market and people enjoyed it and it made him money. Now, Elliot over the years has raised his prices a bit. I believe his prints now sell for about $23 on Etsy, which is pretty good considering his only costs really are ink, paper, and packing supplies. Well, the margins are great, $23 is still a relatively low cost item. The key to making money selling low cost items is volume, 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 selling a lot of them. And Elliot has managed to do just that. Now, the one challenge I see with Elliot's business is there's nothing really proprietary about it. As Kevin O'Leary, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, always says, you know, there's nothing proprietary. Anybody can copy it. There's really nothing to stop somebody else from finding royalty-free images, staining some paper, and printing them. This is both a pro and a con. It's what allowed Elliot to get started fairly easily, but it's also what will allow others to copy him and try to take a share of his business. When running a business like this, it's important to get out there and strike while the iron is hot and make as much money as you can before others flood in. If you're able to make a strong enough presence from the start, you can also get to the point where others can't catch up to you in terms of SEO and visibility on a platform like Etsy, eBay, or Amazon. One thing Elliot may want to do is begin expanding into other products or do something uh, to his art that provides a bit of a barrier to entry that others can't copy. An example of this that I thought of would be buying a more expensive printer that does larger size prints. While others with a standard consumer at home printer will be able to copy a 9 by 11 print, most people won't have a larger, uh, more expensive printer to make larger prints, and that could be something that sets them apart and provides a bit of a barrier to entry keeping others at bay. One thing to mention about his hustle, this may not last forever, but most things in life don't. Well, it's great to start and run a long-standing sustainable business, something that I've been coming to grips with as a side hustler and entrepreneur is that nothing lasts forever. The same way that most people employed by others probably won't be working at the same job five years from now, and that's okay. The side hustle you start today doesn't have to be what you're doing five years from now. Oftentimes, one side hustle will lead to another, will need lead to another idea, send you but down some different offshoot, and, and that's perfectly fine. Some hustles are short-term. That's good. Other times, hustles can lead us to other ideas or can help make us money that we need to springboard our, our next idea to something bigger or longer lasting. Anyhow, guys. That's today's side hustle story. If you're curious about doing something similar, whether just for fun, for a gift for a friend or family member, or even to try to start a business like this, check out YouTube. There's a number of videos showing you how to tea stain paper. I hope you were inspired. I hope you were entertained. And until next time, this is Rules for Rebels with Side Hustle Tuesdays, signing out.